Welcome back to my continuing series on world government UFO disclosure activities. I'm Keith and I welcome you back here. Uh, today's installment will be brought to you courtesy of France. Now as we're going through uh, my particular series here, we've uh, come to notice a characteristic that uh, some countries' governments are more centralized than others in terms of their curation of information, dissemination, and uh, reporting to the publics. Now, France is considered one of the more centralized uh, government entities in terms of their activities regarding the UFO UAP phenomenon. Uh, a few fun facts about uh, France here before we dive into the disclosure efforts. Uh, France's population is roughly about 0.85 of 1% of the world's population. That translates roughly to about 68 to 70 million people. Now, uh, one unique characteristic uh, in France is that their government actually pays uh, private uh, public UFO investigators. They pay uh, salaries, uh, which is kind of unique. Most other countries uh, the, in the profession of ufology, uh, the independent public researchers are basically uh, funded uh, on their own. The government really, at this point at least anyways, uh, most governments don't pursue that avenue for paying UFO, UAP investigators for their help. So. Uh, in France, uh, the term for UFO, and it's still popularly known, uh, the acronym as UFOs, it's called OVNI, O-V-N-I. Uh, in France, uh, there is currently uh, unavailability to the public, uh, roughly over 100,000 pages uh, consisting of 1,600 files of uh, UFO uh, disclosure sightings and uh, reports. Uh, this dates back to before 1950 into the uh, World War II time. So uh, one other uh, entity aspect uh, that's important, and as you'll uh, come to find out here in a minute, uh, France, ha France has a very centralized uh, department and organization of UFO UAP OVNI studies. The French Space Command uh, was a recently organized entity kind of following along suit with the United States forming its own uh, U.S. Uh, space agency as a direct agency division of that country's military. So the French Space Command is also um, uh, also a member of that particular space club. Uh, let's go into the history just a little bit uh, about, oh, uh, actually there is one other thing I uh, wanted to mention. Here at the outset, I'll go into detail in a minute, but uh, again, going back to that centralized uh, uh, departmentality uh, bureaucracy of uh, the France government, uh, their uh, main organization is uh, called the National Center for Space Studies and its acronym is CNES. Remember that because uh, as you'll uh, listen uh, and learn through uh, other installments in the rest of my series here that uh, Francis CNES also lends their expertise, knowledge, and consideration out to other countries, governments, UFO, UAP disclosure efforts. So uh, CNES is a very, very organized. Uh, they were organized back in 1961. I'll get to that in just a minute. So let's go into the history uh, just a little bit real quick. Uh, back in 1954, uh, there was a, a big flap of uh, reported sightings uh, and also trace evidence and other forms of uh, data evidence collected, uh, electromagnetic force evidence, uh, which means uh, uh, anything from radar to uh, Geiger counter radiation uh, detections, uh, uh, in some infrared even back in the 1950s at that time. So uh, the uh, best summary is uh, a really good book uh, by Amy Michelle, uh, that was published in uh, a little bit after 1954, uh, Glimmering Lights on Flying Saucers. So you'll want to maybe grab a hold of that and that'll give you a really good uh, basis perspective on the uh, UFO, again in France it's called UFOs, uh, OVNIs. 
uh, the phenomenon as it occurred back in that 1954 flap. Uh, so about the, uh, fast forward, the most famous and popular sighting witness event occurred January 8th of 1981 in Trans and Provence. Uh, there was um, uh, a craft that landed uh, and uh, the data and evidence collected from that included physical trace evidence, uh, soil samples, uh, impressions, uh, plaster casts made of the uh, landing legs of the craft, a uh, Geiger counter, and uh, a, a lot of EMF information, uh, including a very, very broad spectrum of those electromagnetic forces. So there have been a lot of other uh, cases in France uh, that have occurred uh, since, like I said, at least the uh, early 1950s. Uh, you'll also want to follow the works of uh, Jacques Vallée, who uh, is uh, kind of uh, one of France's uh, native sons, so to speak. He is uh, continuing a very, very long and prestigious career, not only as an astronomer and scientist, uh, but as a uh, ufologist, so he has uh, uh, Jacques Vallée many books out, so you'll definitely want to tap in to his research knowledge in the form of the titles of his book. Uh, fast forward just very recently, back in September the 18th to the 22nd, uh, Paris held uh, host to the International Astronomy Congress. That is the worldwide governing body of the astronomy profession so uh, they go on a, uh, a a worldwide tour so to speak uh, moving their annual conference venue each year this past year just in uh, September it was held in uh, Paris and we're still awaiting final reports from the results of that conference in which the UFO OVNI phenomenon was very highly discussed also so let's move on a little bit here. Uh, the main contributors to the OVNI effort, UFO effort in France, as I mentioned, uh, France is a very centralized departmentality. Uh, the uh, CNES, the uh, National Center for Space uh, uh, Exploration Study, CNES, uh, it's uh, been, uh, it was created actually in 1961 by uh, then private citizen uh, Charles de Gaulle, but he uh, eventually became president of France. And uh, currently, uh, like uh, I mentioned, CNES still exists. Its current CEO is Philippe Batiste as of the end of 2022. Technical headquarters, CNES has two of them, one located in Toulouse and the other in uh, the Guiana Space Center uh, in South America, in which uh, France has ha held a long time presence since the 1960s uh, for rocket launches. Uh, in uh, French Guiana in South America. Reason for that is it's uh, geophysical in that uh, rocket uh, trajectories uh, taking off from uh, space pads uh, have the easiest effort, the le least effort and easiest methodology uh, to obtain Earth orbit if they're launched from an equatorial platform. So that's why uh, France is a very, very important space, uh, not only student, but teacher and uh, pursuer of knowledge in terms of uh, the cosmos and uh, certainly OVNIs and the UFO ET phenomenon. So uh, CNES is, it was and continues to be the, the central main reporting body. Uh, fast forward a little bit, uh, in 1977 uh, the uh, ufology uh, profession got its own wing, so to speak, of the CNES Space Agency. Uh, GEPAN, G E P A N, is the acronym, was formed. Uh, at that time, Claude Poer, who was the Systems and Projects uh, Division Director of CNES, uh, actually uh, was the main contributor to the formation of GEPAN. Now, uh, what's important from GEPAN uh, for us to take away knowledge wise? is that they wrote the uh, protocol 
for studying the UFO OVNI phenomenon, which they still use today in its entirety. They have a four-level classification system from A through D, uh, and they uh, to categorize and curate uh, UFO, YAVNI sightings, and uh, witness reports as they come in. Uh, the A series is is uh, categorized as the uh, file repository where the uh, OVNI UFO uh, has been perfectly or completely identified, um, whether it's uh, unidentified or whether it's actually identified as some kind of a natural or man-made phenomenon. Uh, the B series is uh, ca uh, categorized and curated as probable identification of either a natural or man-made force. Uh, I'll clear up the confusion. For A, I said uh, I included uh, the UFO thing. A uh, perfectly identifiable just means by natural means or uh, from man-made means. Uh, the UFO uh, part comes up in just a second here. Uh, B, again, is the probable identification of uh, a, uh, an observation or um, uh, something that occurs in nature or that is man-made. Uh, level C is that level department where the phenomenon is unidentified due to a lack of evidence. Finally, the D categorization are those truly OVNI UFO UAPs with data and with evidence that categorizes them as truly UFO or OVNIs as they say in France. So the GPAN for, uh, protocol that uh, was created, uh, this was written in uh, the very late 1970s, uh, 77 at the start. This system of categorization is still in use today. Fast forward uh, in 1988, uh, the GPAN uh, moniker, the, the acronym, was renamed SEPRA. And uh, this was done, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, SEPRA continued on for roughly 16 years till 2004. Same scope and level of activities, it was just a name change more or less. Uh, what, what is important is that uh, this was uh, also a special uh, study part of uh, GPAN and CNES in which you want to tap into if you can get a hold of the 2004 book by Jean-Jacques Velasco uh, OVNIs evidence some la evidence some are real UAPs so uh, his 2004 book by Jean-Jacques Velasco uh, in 2005 another acronym name change to the current GIPAN G-E-I-P-A-N. Uh, again, formed in 2005. Uh, they then, then started to use the acronym a little bit more UAP. So you've got OVNI slash UFO slash UAP. Um, basically, uh, GAIPAN uh, operates in a lot of the same ways as the uh, Mutual UFO Network, the uh, MUFON organization does. Uh, they, uh, again, as I mentioned, the French government actually pays ufologists and researchers for conducting their studies. So uh, the, uh, the GAIPAN uh, are more boots on the ground research investigators in that when new cases come in and uh, Guy Pan on average they uh, roughly uh, get to boots on the ground studying at least a hundred new cases every single year so they're responsible for uh, for doing that and uh, the current director is uh, Vincent Cost Costas um, so Guy Pan is the now current uh, division, OVNI, uh, UFO, UAP division of CNES. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, native son Jacques Vallée, uh, is uh, has been for 60 years now, uh, ufologist, astronomer, science researcher, and uh, you'll want to tap into his knowledge, uh, library consisting of many, many books in regards to the uh, phenomenon subject, uh, we are not alone in terms of intelligence 
uh, entities uh, in the universe. Uh, also, too, uh, another uh, main contributor, I mentioned the MUFON group, Mutual UFO Network. Uh, they have a chapter in France also, which works alongside the GuidePan. The current director is uh, Pascal Fechner. So, uh, in France, uh, MUFON does exist, and uh, they uh, conduct the same activities. Uh, they'll collect when they get a report into their uh, computer uh, CMS system at MUFON. Uh, uh, investigators are assigned and they will go and interview the witnesses and conduct a variety of scientific studies to obtain evidence and data whatever form that may take to be so uh, the websites I'll mention to you here in relation to uh, getting more involved in finding information about the uh, France effort for UFO UAP disclosure again uh, being very centralized www.guypan.fr for France and uh, www.cnes-guypan.france slash guypan and again these email addresses will be available on my Facebook page the Humaniverse so uh, for all of our uh, discussions on worldwide government disclosure please go to my uh, Facebook page titled the Humaniverse and you can obtain website information from all of these so let's move on uh, to uh, a uh, very a quick uh, show of explanation of the various agencies within uh, the government uh, purview of France that are involved. It's uh, extensive, not as extensive as others, but uh, that uh, just means better and more efficient curation. So uh, the French Air Force, the French Navy have been uh, ongoing contributors to this uh, collection um, uh, effort phenomenon. Uh, CNES, as I mentioned, is the uh, central repository. The Gendarme National, uh, various weather agencies in France, the Paris Observatory, which has been a long time very important uh, contributor also, and local uh, police gendarme departments in terms of uh, actually uh, collecting information uh, since at least the very early 1950s. So let's move to the uh, government disclosure efforts here with uh, France. They have been uh, fairly forthcoming uh, as we uh, as we speed up into today, the end of uh, 2022. Uh, back in uh, June of 1978, then known as GIPAN, part of the CNES, uh, they disclosed about 500 pages worth of reports uh, dating back to at least 1951, uh, what they had in their in their uh, uh, archives. Uh, fast forward 1999, the Comita report uh, was a very very detailed report, and uh, it 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 is akin in perspective and scope to the U.S.'s Project Blue Book and uh, Great Britain's Project Condine, in which there were uh, ufologists and uh, various science, military, and engineering researchers assigned to this, uh, sur uh, not survey, but actually study, uh, and many, many members, like I said, France's uh, uh, public engagement in which they do pay uh, public contributors. So the Comita report, uh, the title, uh, if for those of you that want to look this up, uh, their report was titled UFO and Defense, What to Expect. Now the Comita report uh, became very seminal as uh, with uh, the uh, CNES and GuyPan efforts, as I mentioned at the beginning, circling back, that uh, France collaborates very openly and extensively with other countries' government efforts for UFO UAP disclosure. So the Comita report was very, very important at the time. Uh, its report uh, curiously indicated that about 5% up to that time in 1999 of of uh, sightings and witness reports were ultimately categorized into the D category in which uh, truly unidentified with evidence to support their conclusions. So uh, fast forward in, in a little bit here, uh, we're going to find uh, uh, in uh, 
2007, roughly uh, March the 22nd was the actual date of the report, the CNS came out with their entire disclosure file documentation download and dump of over a hundred thousand pages so uh kind of comparing back at the time uh, brazil was getting very close to disclosing everything that they knew uh france certainly great britain uh as you've uh, you will uh learn in uh, one of my other installments uh, became very uh forthcoming australia and new zealand uh, were also on the uh on the radar for uh, full disclosure, but uh, the CNES uh, coughed up 100,000 plus pages. Now it's curious that out of this whole uh, data dump, so to speak, they found that roughly 25% of all of these files and they would, uh, uh, these 100,000 pages are contained in roughly 1,600 files. Roughly out of that, 20, about 25% were ultimately categorized into 2007 as type D or those that are truly unidentified with physical evidence to support the conclusions. Now the CNES, as I mentioned before, I'll recap, uh, they take in roughly a, a hundred or so new cases for on the boots study and investigation each year. Uh, to sum up and to conclude uh, France's efforts here, uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the uh, CNES and also the French Astronomical and Aeronautical Association, the AAAF, Triple F, Technical Command. Uh, they work, this is another uh, agency of the French government that works with other European agencies and uh, also including some of those in South America, Chile, uh, for uh, one example. Uh, they work together with these other government agencies in terms of uh, studying and uh, making conclusions, uh, obtaining knowledge about the UFO UAP phenomenon. Uh, they also work with uh, NARCAP, the National Aviation Reporting Center in the U.S., and the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies. This is uh, an interesting newer uh, formation organization alliance of worldwide scientists, ufologists in various uh, scientists in various uh, profession, so to speak, physical, uh, geological, uh, uh, chemical, and uh, biological sciences. Uh, they have uh, come together within the past uh, few years to uh, promote as a, an additional uh, reporting and study uh, group. This is um, uh, not a government group, but it actually is a uh, commercial uh, privately funded organization, uh, at least in some countries in the world. So that takes you through a little bit of a survey of uh, the France uh, government's uh, attempts and efforts at uh, UFO, OVNI, UAP disclosure. Thank you for uh, listening in. And uh, again, if you have any questions or uh, insights or whatever, follow me on uh, my Facebook page uh, known as The Humaniverse. And again, for that website uh, information regarding uh, where you can tap in on an ongoing basis to uh, obtain new information as uh, new reports in the phenomenon come in. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Take care now.